Hello, welcome to this introduction to postgraduate study in the Department of Geography at the University of Cambridge. My name is Charlotte Lemansky and I'm the Director of Postgraduate Studies here in Geography at Cambridge. I'm really delighted uh, that you're watching this video, that you're interested in coming to study with us and I hope that in this short introduction to postgraduate study in the department I can give you a bit of a flavour, a bit of an overview of what are the different postgraduate options for studying geography at Cambridge, both taught options and research-led options. In addition to this very general introduction to postgraduate study in the department, there are also much more specific short videos that you can watch about each of the NPHILs and about um, studying for a PhD in geography here. So please uh, sit back, enjoy, listen to this short introduction to postgraduate study in geography uh, and um, keep those questions in mind because we have a live Q&A scheduled uh, at some point later. One of the first questions that you've probably already asked yourself before listening to this video is why postgraduate study? Why do you want to go further? You've completed an undergraduate degree, perhaps you've already done one postgraduate degree and you're starting to think that actually maybe this is an environment in which you'd like to study further and contribute more. Now, there's lots of different personal reasons why you might be interested in postgraduate study, but I want to think here about four broad reasons. The first is that postgraduate study provides an opportunity to make a contribution to academic debates, policy debates, public debates. The shift from undergraduate to postgraduate, and also uh, a greater shift from taught postgraduate to research postgraduate, it's a shift from using knowledge, reading, reading information, listening to information and writing about it. It's a shift from receiving knowledge, using knowledge, and the shift is towards producing and creating knowledge, being part of uh, this community in which we create new debates and new knowledge. That's the first thing that's really exciting about postgraduate study. The second is that this isn't just a me mechanistic um, study where you kind of enter, take some exams and come out at the other end with a qualification. This is postgraduate study is, is really an opportunity to wonder about the world, to be curious, to really deepen your understanding of a very specific field of study. It's a real opportunity to narrow down in something perhaps very small that interests you, uh, to ask really difficult questions and to start to develop your critical knowledge, understanding and contributing towards that field of study. The third is that postgraduate study, it isn't just about getting that piece of paper, it isn't just about writing that dissertation. It's a much broader range of research, analytical and writing skills that come about during a postgraduate degree. Now, that might be conducting primary research, it might be working in laboratories, it might be delivering your findings at a workshop or, or at a conference or writing an academic paper. It might be teaching undergraduate students. There's all sorts of additional skills that you can develop during a postgraduate degree. And then the fourth reason for why postgraduate study is it's a really exciting opportunity to be part of a collegiate, uh, passionate, scholarly community where we, where we actively want to hear your words, where we want to encourage you to contribute to the debates that you're reading about and, and to become part of the producer, the generator, the, the, the creator of the knowledge that we're all understanding, processing and building on. Now, but... So you want to study postgraduate, uh, you, you want to study a postgraduate degree. Why geography and why Cambridge? So there's two things that are very specific about geography at Cambridge. The first is that we value postgraduate students as crucial members of the research community. It's a real shift from being an undergraduate student where you're a consumer of knowledge to, to being a postgraduate student where you're recognised as being part of our research community. Here in the Department of Geography, we have a number of different research groups and postgraduate students are actively encouraged to become part of those groups, to take on leadership roles within those groups, because we recognise that you are now part of the research community. Uh, the second is that Geography at Cambridge has been externally recognised uh, as a centre for research excellence, uh, as, as a centre um, across the country and globally, um, where outstanding research is undertaken. So that's often a reason that people want to come and do postgraduate study in our department in geography at Cambridge. Now, I mentioned previously uh, that we have a number of different research groups in the department. And if you go onto the Department of Geography website, you'll be able to see them. I've done a screenshot here uh, of those research groups. 
you'll see there are six research groups. Three are broadly human geography, three are broadly physical geography, although in practice there's significant overlap between those. Uh, vital geographies, infrastructural geographies, geographies of knowledge, biogeography and biogeomorphology, climate and environmental dynamics, uh, glaciology and uh, glacial geology. And there are opportunities to participate in seminars, to get to know other members of those research communities, uh, to be able to lead workshops, uh, to be able to meet with scholars, not just in geography, but who are interested in these themes across the globe. So it's a really exciting opportunity to get involved in the research that's already happening in the department and to be part of uh, this process of developing new and critical ideas. Uh, we also have a very uh, large postgraduate um, school. Numbers are increasing every year and our postgraduate students are split across the Department of Geography and the Scott Polar Research Institute. Uh, we also have a number of MPhils as well as PhD programmes that run across Department of Geography and the Scott Polar Research Institute. So it's an opportunity to join a really thriving community of postgraduate students where you'll have other students that you can share your experiences, your ideas with uh, and therefore not be isolated. Um, obviously being at Cambridge is an amazing opportunity to access a really outstanding range of events and resources. The number of seminars going on in Cambridge at any moment in time it, is, is just overwhelming. Whatever it is that you're interested in, there will be a seminar programme, there will be external speakers coming in. And with the shift increasingly at the moment towards virtual platforms, these seminars are still happening. They're happening online, they're happening via Zoom, they're happening via Teams. And in actual fact, it's been an opportunity to invite scholars in that wouldn't ordinarily have been able to come to Cambridge to contribute to seminars across the virtual platform so it's a really exciting time. Um, the resources at Cambridge in terms of training programs that, that are available are also absolutely outstanding um, so it's a real opportunity to engage across the university not just within geography. Okay so what can you study in terms of a postgraduate degrees in geography at Cambridge? We have a number of MPhils that are both taught and research-led we also have the opportunity to study for PhDs, which are an entirely research-led degree. Now, I'm going to talk you very briefly through the MPhils and the PhD programmes that we have. This is a very brief introduction because there are also pre-recorded lectures from the conveners of each of these MPhils. And I'm also recording a short introduction to the PhD programme as well. So this video is just a, a broad overview of all the different postgraduate options. So again, if you go onto our website, you can see a list of the MPhil programmes that we run. There's the MPhil in Anthropocene Studies, the MPhil in Conservation Leadership, MPhil in Geography, MPhil in Holocene Climate, and MPhil in Polar Studies. Those are the five MPhil programmes that we're currently offering. What are they all about? So firstly, the MPhil in Geography. This is a full year programme. It's 12 months. It's led by Mia Gray. And this is a programme that very much focuses on research skills and specialist knowledge. It's really important, those that are thinking of applying for the MPhil in geography, to be aware that there's no taught elements. There aren't set lectures, there aren't set, set um, essays that you need to submit. This is about writing a dissertation, carrying out an original piece of research in consultation with your supervisor, but it's very much about independent-led research. Uh, although there's no taught elements, you're encouraged to undertake social science research methods training, which, are, which take place across the university. And the programme is assessed by a dissertation. Now, you can take the MPhil as a standalone. Perhaps you've done a first degree in geography and want to explore something very specific further, or you've done a first degree in a different subject and are really fascinated by geography and want to study, st study a piece of independent research very specifically. Or it could be that you see the MPhil in geography as kind of the first year before you then might go on to postgrad to, to PhD study. Either uh, is absolutely fine. Uh, we also have the MPhil in polar studies, which is situated in the Scott Polar um, Centre. Uh, the course director for that is Ian Willis. This is a nine month full time programme. It is a taught master's in that there are four specific modules, two social science humanities and two in the physical sciences strand. It's possible to take the MPhil in polar studies either in the social science strand or the physical science strand. There's also participation 
in research methods training and the MPhil is assessed through three essays and a dissertation. And again, many students do the MPhil as a standalone qualification. Many others also see it as the first step towards a PhD. We also have the MPhil in conservation leadership for which the course director is Chris Sandbrook. This is a full-time 11-month master's course and it's very specifically aimed at postgraduate students who have leadership potential and how, who have already demonstrated at least three to five years of relevant experience in conservation leadership. So this is not the MPhil if you've come straight from undergraduate studies, it's very much for those that are already working in leadership roles in the conservation sector and want to develop their skills, develop their knowledge through this one year MPhil. Now this year, 2020, we also launched two brand new MPhils that are interlinked and for which teaching is shared across the two programmes. The first is the MPhil in Anthropocene studies. Now, the Anthropocene is a proposed geological epoch dating from the commencement of significant human impact on the Earth's geology and ecosystem. And the course director is Professor Mike Horn. It's an 11 month full time programme. It's a taught MPhil in that there are very specific modules that you have to take. One module is specific to Anthropene studies. The other module is shared with the other new MPhil, Holocene studies, Holocene climate, sorry. In addition, MPhil in Anthropocene studies students undertake social science research methods training. There's a UK based residential school and the MPhil is assessed through an essay, an exam and a dissertation. So it's what we call a taught MPhil as opposed to the MPhil in geography, which is a research based MPhil. And again, this can be a standalone program or training towards a PhD. Uh, in tandem with the MPhil in Anthropocene studies, we had the MPhil in Holocene climax, the Holocene being the geological epoch since the last ice age. Uh, and the MPhil in Holo Holocene climax is directed by Professor Ulf Brunken. It's also an 11 month program. It runs in tandem with the Anthropocene study. So although there's a the specific taught module for Holocene climates, there's also a shared module between the two MPhils. And we really encourage the cohorts, the students undertaking these MPhils to develop connections with, e with one another. Uh, and they spend time together, making sure that they, they connect with one another and that it isn't a divide between kind of a more human or a more physical perspective. The Holocene climate students also have lab based training. There's a UK residential school and very much like uh, the Anthropocene studies, they're assessed through three essays and a dissertation. And again, it can be uh, a standalone qualification or a launch pad to PhD study. And as I've said, for each of these MPhils, the directors have also recorded short introduction films to give you to give you more information about what's involved um, than I than I can do here, which is just a general overview to postgraduate study in the department. In addition to the MPhil programmes, which are all a year or, or less, we also have um, opportunities to study for a PhD, whether you're interested in a PhD in geography or a PhD in polar studies. In both cases, these are expected to be three year full time programmes. A PhD is very much research led where you work collaboratively with your supervisor to develop a question that you want to study to undertake original research. In addition to, the, to, to this, there's also opportunities to undertake skills based training courses uh, within the within the department as well as within the university. And I'm uploading a short video also about undertaking a PhD in geography at Cambridge, where I'll give more detail about this program. Now, how do you apply? Now, I'd really encourage you to go onto the website, have a look at the postgraduate tab, see all the different opportunities that are there. The university also has a significant amount of funding opportunities that you can look at. Now, it's possible to apply for postgraduate study right up until March next year. However, the main deadline, if you want to be considered for funding, is the 7th of January next year. When you submit your application, you can tick on the application which funding you'd like to be considered for, which funding you think you're eligible for. And simply by doing that, your application will be put forward for those different fun funding opportunities, provided you've managed to submit your application by the 7th of January deadline. And I'd really encourage you, of course, not to leave it to the last minute because you do need to include references with that deadline, transcripts and all sorts of information that has to be collated. So I really encourage you not to be working to the last minute on that deadline. Thank you very much for listening to this short introduction to postgraduate study 
in the Department of Geography. As I've said, there are also videos that you can watch giving you much more detailed information about each of the M fields as well as about PhD study. There are also a series of live Q&A sessions that are going to be run on Zoom where you can meet with the convener of the M fields or the PhD program that you're interested in. Uh, those Q&A sessions will also have current students attending them. So it's a great opportunity to ask any specific questions that you might have uh, and to get feedback from both staff and current students on what it's really like to undertake postgraduate study in the Department of Geography. I'm really excited that you're interested in studying with us and I really hope that I get to see uh, some of you over the coming months and years. Thanks very much for listening.